Hi, welcome to the second episode of The Weaving Show. I'm Chrissy, and I'm coming to you from just outside of Vancouver, BC. And I have a finished project to show you, but before I get into that, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who has subscribed, if that is you, thank you, and who has shown interest in this little weaving channel. So, as I mentioned on the last episode, I my desire with this channel is to both talk about what I'm working on with my weaving and also to hopefully inspire you to start your own weaving channel because I like listening to other people talk about weaving and there are not a lot of weaving channels out there that just chat about the details of their projects. So what I've noticed is that there are a few channels out there that talk about weaving as well as knitting and spinning, but for the most part, the weaving is just a very quick mention, not a lot of details on the project. So with this channel, I really wanna give as many details as I can on what I'm working on. And I also want to warn you that I am a total beginner. So you're gonna watch me mess things up and hopefully learn. So <laughs> that's the hope, fingers crossed. Anyway, that being said, I really hope you'll start your own channel. Comment below if you do with a link to your channel because I will absolutely watch it. So let's get started, let's get into it. I have a finished project. I finished this, which looks like a scarf, but it's not a scarf. So <laughs> this, <laughs> this project, is, it didn't really turn out how I wanted it to in the end, but on the bright side, I am very, very happy with the cloth that I created. So I consider that a win all in all, but it's definitely a, uh, was, it didn't go as planned. So last show, I showed you a little warp chain, which was made out of 100% Lincoln long wool from Mountain Meadow Wools in Wyoming. And it was from their April 2017 Legacy Yarn Club shipment. They had shipped out two skeins of this Lincoln long wool that was hand dyed by them. And it was the Summer Skies colorway. It was limited edition though, and I checked in their shop a little while ago and they didn't have anything up. So I think it's gone for good for now anyway. And I wanna do something special with this. And so what I did when I first received the fiber or the yarn, I went to my fleece and fiber source book. And that is my, my go-to. Whenever I'm using a fiber that I'm not using all the time, I go there. Spinning or knitting, it, I find it very useful for both. And now with weaving, I find it really useful. So one of the things that the fleece and fiber source book said about Lincoln long wool was that it is good for hard wearing projects like bags, that, uh, cushions, that sort of stuff. And it's also very well suited to weaving. So I wanted to make a project that I could have, that I could look at frequently, touch frequently, but not have to wear against my neck. So I didn't want to make a scarf. I didn't want to make a shawl. I toyed with the idea of knitting with this yarn and making a shawl, but in the end I thought, you know what? I think it's going to be best suited to weaving and I'm so, so happy that I did. So this, I had originally intended, let me see if I can remember all the details. I had originally intended to, I'll start at the beginning. I, wrap, I did wraps per inch on this yarn. I'm going to show it to you. I have a little bit left, a very little bit left, just my scraps from the end of weaving with it. So I did wraps per inch on this yarn and it was coming up as 14 wraps per inch. And I was wrapping it a little bit less tightly than I normally would when determining wraps per inch, because that's what I've kind of encountered online with the way to do wraps per inch when you're going to weave with the yarn. So I did that. And I ended up coming up with 14 wraps per inch. And for plain weave, I took half that number to determine what heddle I wanted to, or heddle size I wanted to use. And I was going to do it on my Ashford rigid heddle, which kind of worked out perfectly. 14 wraps per inch. I have a seven and a half dent heddle on my Ashford rigid heddle. So I was like, all right, that's perfect. I'll do plain weave. Fantastic. And then I decided partway through my project planning. Oh, I also calculated out uh, my 
width and all of that based on that number. So I was going to do seven and a half ends per inch. I've got it written down over here so I don't totally confuse myself. And it was going to be 13 inches wide. And I thought that would be kind of perfect to do a little project bag with. So I could put my, uh, my knitting project in there. I thought it would be a good sock project size. A little on the big side, but in range with that. Thinking with a 12 inch width, I'd probably end up with a, uh, or a 13 inch width in the, in the reed, I would probably end up with a 12 inch or so, even like 11 and a half inch, and I'd be totally fine with that. So that was my plan. So I, I decided with my seven and a half ends per inch, if I wanted it to be 13 inches wide in the reed, I did seven and a half times 13, which was 98. And so that meant I needed 98 ends to make it that wide in that reed. So that's where things kind of all went off sideways, which is <laughs> totally, it was fine. Uh, so I ended up deciding that I didn't want to use the rigid heddle, that I wanted to use my table loom. So with that, I have my 10 dent reed on there, but I decided that I wanted to do, I was going to do seven ends per inch. In the reed conversion charts, so you can use all sorts of different reeds for different ends per inch basically, I couldn't find an easy one to do seven and a half dents per inch. So I thought, all right, that's okay. I'll do seven ends per inch. And I will, because 14 divided by two is seven. That makes more sense <laughs> than what I said earlier. Uh, so I thought I'd be totally fine with that doing seven ends per inch. So I, my threading for that to use a 10 dent reed to make it a seven and a half or seven dent reed basically was to do zero, one, one, zero, one, one. So I would thread nothing in the first slot and then one in the next, one in the following, and then nothing, and then one, and then one, and then nothing, go along like that. It was super easy to do, super easy to keep track of. So I did that. And then I did a few picks of plain weave, and then I did, I decided that I didn't want to do plain weave, that I wanted to do a twill, and I wanted to do a three one twill, or one three twill, whichever one it is. So whichever one has you put one of the, you know, one of the, to pull one of the toggles. So I was like, all right, this is perfect. I'll do that. Well, with a twill, you need your ends <laughs> to be closer or your threads to be closer together because otherwise you end up with a weft faced fabric. So you basically can't see any of the warp threads and it's, I guess, at that point, it's unbalanced. If it's weft-faced or warp-faced, it would be technically considered unbalanced, I'm guessing. Uh, so anyway, so I did that. I did some um, one three twill, And first thing, though, I noticed when I was doing my plain weave is that I could not beat the weft lightly enough to have it come in where I wanted it to be, to be seven, in, seven um, picks per inch. So... I knew I was in a little trouble there. And then I did the three one or one three twill and it was just totally weft faced. I couldn't see any of the warp threads, which kind of gave it a cool effect, but was not really what I was looking to do. So, and of course, like I had done like this much plain weave and then I had done like this much three one three twill and then, but I didn't want to waste any of this yarn. So I ended up unweaving that whole amount, which didn't take very long. This was like probably the best yarn ever to unweave because it's so slick. It was just, it was super easy. And uh, so I did that, pulled that all back. And then I, I knew that I would have to change it up and reslay my read. So I, with my seven ends per inch that I was testing out, I was getting, uh, it instead of being 13 inches in the read, it was 14 inches in the read, which would have been fine. But I realized that I needed to really like pull it back a little bit. And I also decided that instead of doing a one three twill, I really wanted to do a two two twill. <laughs> so this, my way of kind of doing things on the fly, I'm learning is not always the best way to do it with weaving projects because you really need to have a plan and stick to the plan. But that is not what I do. <laughs> so I'm like, ooh, let's try something new here. Let's mess everything up. In the end, it did not, I, it was fine. So 
I went online and I saw, I checked around to see kind of like rules of thumb for set when it comes to tutu twills. And I found a website that said that if you want to do a balanced twill, so a tutu twill, that you would need to use two thirds of your reps per inch number, and that should be your ends per inch. So at this point, I decided I was going to redo the wraps per inch with the way that I normally do wraps per inch when I'm determining wraps per inch for my hand spun, because I've done that for a very, very long time and I'm comfortable with that. And there were some places I saw online that kind of said, do it a little bit more loose and do it a little bit more spaced out. And that to me is not really wraps per inch because then you can't get like a, an even number, like the spaces between each wrap it varies just a little bit. So I just did it the same way that I do my regular reps per inch. I've never had a problem with that. And I, instead of getting 14 reps per inch, I got 15 reps per inch. So I thought, I'm just gonna go with it. 15 reps per inch, that's fine. So two thirds of 15 reps per inch is 10. So I needed 10 ends per inch for my balanced 2212. And I had my 10 end read on my loom already, so uh, perfect. So I untied all of my knots that I put in the front, at, which was super easy. And uh, it was just after my, <laughs> my unweaving and then untying, it was just a little bit like time consuming, but it was not difficult. And then I pulled all of my, my, uh, my threads back through the back of the reed, but I still kept them in the heddles, it was fine. Uh, my threading was uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, so straight draw, straight draft, straight threading, straight threading. Anyway, one, two, three, four, all the way along. And because I had 98 threads, 98 is not divisible by four. So I wouldn't have had it like full repeat. So I ended up with um, basically two extra threads and I thought, perfect. They will be my floating selvages for my 2212 because I haven't done floating selvages before. So it actually ended up working really nicely. I, you just, you don't, with the thing with floating selvages, if you've never experienced them, is that they don't go through a heddle. They just, are at the side and you thread them through the reed and they don't go up and down basically. And um, I read a tip for floating selvages. Well, I guess not really a tip, uh, the instructions <laughs> for floating selvages. I don't know, maybe other people do it differently, but you basically go over, when you're th throwing your shuttle, you go over your floating selvage. And then when you're pulling your shuttle out the other end of your sh um, shed, you, go under that one. So that worked out really nicely. What I did is I actually just took my catching hand and just hooked it up so it had the floating selvage on top and it was easy to pull it through and not have the, uh, the shuttle accidentally jump over the floating selvage on the other end. And then when I went to throw it back, I made sure it was over the floating selvage. And then I did the same thing where I hooked under and, and caught my shuttle on the other side. So it worked really nicely. I, uh, I'm very, I, I kind of love floating selvages, I gotta say. Like, having something to catch on, especially with the twills, I don't think I could do a, a twill without it. So, I, I re-threaded with my 10, dance, 10 ends per inch in my 10 dent read, so one per slot, and because I was now having more ends per every inch, my 98 thread warp went from being 13 or then 14 at seven and seven ends per inch. Uh, I went down to 9.6 ends per inch. <laughs> so it went from being like, okay, I can totally do a little bag out of this to, uh, this is kind of narrow. So I don't, I don't think it's going to be a big deal though. I decided that I would either use the fabric to still make a bag. I've got some gray denim. That's like a lightweight denim. It's got a little bit of stretch to it, but not much. I've, I thought I could use that as like the majority of it and then just use uh, a small amount of this uh, woven fabric or I could still make a bag and I think that's what I'm going to do. I think it'll be fine as a sock bag. So in the end it all worked out okay. I just have a much narrower fabric. So it was 9.6 inches in the reed and it's now about 8.6 inches. So I lost an inch it's been finished. It's, I threw it in a bucket of hot soapy water, and, which I'm so impressed with how the color has, has held up based on that. So I threw it in, in with some hot soapy water. The soap I used was sunlight, just dish soap. And I lightly fold it 
and then I let it dry outside in the sun actually. So basically this color has been treated as unkindly as you could possibly treat any sort of dyeing and it has held up 100%. So the reason I ended up putting it out in the sun yesterday was because it was super windy and it dried so fast. So this morning I uh, pressed it just with my iron and ironing board and I cut off my little ends that I had from joining new bobbins and I actually used nail scissors. So they have like an end that comes, that goes, well, I guess if you have it facing one way, the end goes down. If you have it the other way, the end faces up. I had it the end facing up. So there's like the point on the scissors facing up. And then I didn't have to worry about the scissors getting caught and cutting anything that they didn't, they shouldn't cut. And it worked out pretty well. So I'm really happy with this. It's only 8.6 inches wide, but <laughs> that's okay. I'm, I'm cool with that. Uh, gave me a chance to experience floating selvages and to weave with Lincoln long wool, which I would absolutely not hesitate to weave with again. It was very, very pleasant. I would love to see like pillows made out of this or basically anything. I think it'd make an awesome jacket. <laughs> like kind of like a like motorcycle style, like bomber jacket. I think it would be fantastic for that but obviously I don't have enough so the only regret I have this with this whole project is that I did not have more yarn because if I had more yarn I would have made just a big piece of cloth and it would have been fantastic and you can see my edges are improving tremendously so I've hem stitched the front and or the beginning and the end and I actually I did a little bit of plain weave with this one so you can kind of see what it looks like the first inch is plain weave and then I went into my 2212. And I'm so glad I did. In comparison to the plain weave, I actually like it quite a bit more. I thought I would probably, I can just use this plain weave in, in my sewn hem. So it's not gonna be visible, but I just wanted to test it out and see what it looked like. And I've got fringe on here, but that's not long for this world because it's not, I tried, I tried to make it like, I held it up to see if I could do it, pull it off scarf length, but it's way too short. It doesn't even come down to my belly button, so it's definitely not a scarf. But I, it's so, it's drapey, surprisingly drapey, and it's just very, it's got so much sheen to it, and it's a little bit furry, but it's not, it took down a lot of, it basically has none of that itch factor that it had before. It's... It, did, it was, oh, the yarn was very, very smooth and slick and soft, but it definitely had, if you rubbed it against your arm, it definitely was a little bit on the itchy side. And it now, it, it everything's just smoothed out and it's, there's, it's not itchy at all. I could wear this next to my skin. No problem. It's a little itchy still. Not nearly as itchy though. So I'm really, really happy with that. I think it came out really well. I just wish I had more, but that's okay. You can see the drape is quite good. It's not one that would stand up on itself. Here, what have I seen people do this? So it's definitely a structured fabric, but it's not like cardboard. So I'm, and you can totally, yeah. So I'm really happy with it and really happy that I got the opportunity to uh, weave with long wool I would do it again in a heartbeat and actually I'm going to do it again in a heartbeat so <laughs> well probably not too long anyway so just to finish off this this is my this is what the yarn looked like in the first place this is just some of my loom waste and here it is in the finished project so the one thing that was really surprising to me was how fuzzy my woven fabric got after fulling it. I guess it shouldn't surprise me, but with just such a slick, shiny fiber, I was really surprised with how fuzzy it got. And then once it dried, it got, it looked less fuzzy, but it's still quite fuzzy. It's just really interesting. So finish or yarn and finished project. I'm really happy with it. So definitely a good project and it turned out in the end Although if I had more experience, it would have probably gone a little bit smoother, but I definitely learned some things and I got to try out using floating salvages, which I would absolutely do again. I'd do a two by two twill again, any day of the week, it turned out really, really nicely. So the other day 
I went and I picked up my another uh, heddle for my rigid heddle, my Ashford rigid heddle. Uh, when I bought the loom, the 12 and a half dent reeds were on back order. And so I've been waiting for that to come in. So I got the call that it was in. So I picked it up. And while I was there, because I was still partway through my, my Lincoln Longwell project here, I decided that I wanted to spin up some long wool and weave with it. And I would have taken basically any long wool, but she had four ounces of Wensleydale. So I picked up the four ounces of Wensleydale. It's just undyed. And I would have bought two of these had I had she had them, but she only had one. So I've got just the four ounces and I thought, okay, well, four ounces is definitely not going to be enough to do a project with, especially what I know based on how much, how far I got with this. Really not enough. I'm going to need at least eight ounces to do anything at all with. But looking back, I think probably more ideally, I would have at least a pound, you know, two, two of, four of these basically to work with. But I wanted to use the long wool, but I also wanted to have some for the, uh, warp, but I also wanted to have something similar, but a little bit softer for the weft. And now I've got fiber in my nose. <laughs> so I ended up picking up um, my four ounces of Wensleydale and then four ounces of undyed BFL. And I'm going to use that for the weft. And so I'll have my Wensleydale warp and my BFL weft. And I think I'm just going to leave it undyed. Although I've had some ideas as far as maybe doing a little bit of dyeing or changing things up and doing another four ounces of Wensleydale and having that dyed and then another four ounces of BFL and having it dyed in a similar color as the Wensleydale. So it can all kind of be, so it all looks like it goes together and then continuing with the plan. So having the warp be the undyed Wensleydale and the dyed Wensleydale and then the weft be the undyed BFL and the dyed BFL. But I haven't totally decided yet. I think I might just stick with these two for now. I have had these two sitting beside my nest fiber club in my window for a couple of days and I really like the way they all look together the undyed with this so part of me thinks oh I could use that together because this is Falkland so that would hold up similarly so I don't know I haven't totally decided what I want to do yet but I'm going to figure it out in the next couple of days and hopefully start spinning because I really really want to weave with some more long wool so that has been my weaving adventure <laughs> for now. Uh, thank you for joining me. Thank you for anyone who has subscribed to my channel and I hope that you will start your own channel. So let me know if you do in the comments below and I will talk to you again soon. Until then, happy weaving!